Hello and welcome back to another weekly Hyperia update where we go down the Fort Park Monks Walk to find out what's going on so you don't have to. Now, I want to keep these weekly updates as entertaining as possible for you guys. So last week we were discussing some 2024 coasters that were opening, some theme park news, and today we're going to discuss some winter events because it's that horrible time of year where all of the theme parks start closing. As you can see here, we've got a giant puddle sitting here this week, so it's going to be very, very, very muddy down the mud walk. So wish us luck. Whilst we're walking down there to get a Hyperia update, let's have a look at what we can do in winter. What to do in winter when the UK theme park shut? Okay, so we've reached that horrible time of year where everything in the UK is closed. There's still a few little events like Litopia at Alton Towers, but I wouldn't bother with these guys because admission price is still the same. There's a lot of better and cheaper things to do. You just got to get yourself out of the country and I'm going to show you how. Here's one of the trips we did last year and you don't even have to book holiday. You can do it on your days off. First, you want to head to directferries.com because the Eurostar is extremely cheap this time of year. You then want to head to Plopsaland for your first day so you can go on the ride to happiness. After you've had your coaster fix, you can get a nice cheap night in Bruges where they have an awesome Christmas market. Brilliant time of year to visit Bruges. On the second day, you want to head to Efteling. This is one of the best winter events in Europe, guys. It's so chill in the Netherlands this time of year. And it's also extremely cheap. Last year, we managed to do all of this for less than £150 each, so it's definitely worth doing. Stay tuned for more things to do in winter. See you next time. So there's a trip we did last year, guys. It was a brilliant trip. It's a very, very cheap one, as I say. Efteling's absolutely brilliant in winter. The Netherlands is just so chill this time of year. Good food, good atmosphere, and they make it nice and christmas -y. All the rides are still open, so it is a very good thing to do. You've also got Blackpool Pleasure Beach open till sort of the end of November. Legoland Windsor's open till about halfway through December. They've all got some sort of like Christmassy events going on, but as I say, guys, it's still the same as park admission. You, you get half of what's there. I mean, Chessington has like a, a Santa Christmassy type of event, but I honestly wouldn't bother. Eurostar, Eurotunnel, Le Shuttle, whatever you want to call it, is extremely cheap this time of year. So you want to get on that. If you live near Dover, it takes about 25 minutes to get over to Calais, and then you've got loads of theme parks that you're close to. Plopsaland is open all year round, Efteling's open all year round, Disney's open all year round, and then you've got like Fantasia Land or Europa Park where they're doing Winternarium events. So definitely get yourself on one of those guys while it's cheap. It's a lot more expensive in the summer. So there's some winter events for you guys. We're not too sure what we're doing yet with the channel because we're doing these weekly updates at the moment. We are probably going to get over to Efteling because as I say, it is very cheap and it's awesome this time of year. But for now, Let's continue down the Monk's Walk and see what we can find. Our suspicions were correct. It's very muddy. It's the muddiest it's been, actually. Now, obviously, going down the Monk's Walk, we have these warning signs for Fort Park. Keep out. It's against the law. So we obviously know not to go Fort Park side because it's not worth a lifetime ban. It's not worth a fine. But this side, there's a lake, and I think it's the Fort Park Water Sports. There's no signs about going in here, and last week when we were here, there was a hole in the fence. So I might have a little peek and see what we can see through there, because we've never done it before. Now, there's no warning signs. I'm not really sure what's over here, so let's go have a look. It's another pathway. Yeah, I think it's a bit cold for that. Let's turn around. Fancy a swim? No. Continuing our walk down the Monk's Walk. We haven't seen anything out of the ordinary yet since last week. Obviously, you got stealth over there. We get a nice view of that every week. The theme park's currently closed, so it's completely deserted. It feels a little bit illegal being down here, to be honest. Nothing new has been added to Fort Park's junk pile this week. Rest in peace, Angry Birds Land. Not sure if I showed you in the previous updates, guys, but you've got loads of Rumba Rapids boats here. And then over here, you've got Rest in Peace, Rocky Express, rips down to make way for Hyperia. So here's something new for you guys. They've got sort of a security gate here. If you look in there, you can actually see the Hyperia model. So I'm not sure if they added another one for the Hyperia um, sort of gate entry to the park. 
or if they took the one out of the shop but yeah something new now i might have been bad mouthing english theme park events in winter but there is one that holds up and that is winter wonderland at hyde park some of the uk's best flat rides last year they had a new one called discovery which was absolutely brilliant and it was probably one of the most intense flat rides i've ever been on so bring on winter wonderland now if you've been following the weekly updates you'll know what i'm about to say we're about to get down to the Hyperia construction site to see what's going on this week. But before we start, here's the trailer you've all seen a million times. Okay, so here we go. Already, it looks like they've done a lot more work on the maintenance bay from last week. As you can see, it actually looks like they've now installed the track inside where the two trains are gonna be sitting for repairs or just overnight when the weather's bad. So we haven't got down there yet, but that's already a lot of progress from last week. We've got our old fateful stump there. So let's go and get a closer look. Now, as we can see, a lot of work has also started on the station. Let's go down a bit further and see how much new track has been installed. So last week when we were here, guys, they installed all of these supports going along the Monk's Walk. And now we've actually got some track coming along. They haven't finished it yet, but it's definitely a lot of progress from last week. And that's going to be a very fun element of the ride, just flying past the trees and flying past the monk's walk. Switching over to the phone now so we can get some zoomed in shots. As we spoke about before, we got the 165 foot outer bank. That's already been done for a while now, so it's not really new news. We've got some more track installed. And as I say, it's starting to go along the monk's walk with a lot of new work on the station. Let's go see if we can find any more. Fort Park are making it harder and harder to get these updates. It's like Fort Knox. We've got two layers of fences now, but luckily the general public keep giving us some trusty logs. And also, as you can see here, guys, all of the supports up to the station are now finished. We still got a lot more coming in on the other side though. Unfortunately, that's all we've got for you today, guys. Not really too much to see this week, but we still thought we'd come down and have a little look. If we hear anything else or any major updates, I'll keep you updated on the community tab on my channel. If you did enjoy today's vlog, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.